George Herbert Walker Bush became the 41st U.S. president in 1989, just as a wave of revolutions in Central and Eastern Europe caused the Cold War framework to crumble. As a former CIA chief and U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, he brought with him a deep knowledge of foreign affairs, which he honed in the mid-1970s as chief of the U.S. liaison office in Beijing. It was there he formed a personal attachment to China, meeting with its people and its leadership. And so for his first foreign trip as U.S. president, Bush headed back to Beijing, meeting with Deng Xiaoping and other Chinese leaders. He told CCTV reporters at the time, quote, the growing relationship between China and the United States is vital to my country, and I hope it will benefit the people in China. But just four months later, the Tiananmen Square incident would drive a wedge between Bush's United States and Deng's China as the U.S. froze trade and development relations with China. Nevertheless, Bush would continue to push to engage China, sending a team to try to repair relations and resisting efforts by the U.S. Congress to strong-arm Beijing over the nation's differences. Uh, in his book, 41, A Portrait of My Father, the president's son, George W. Bush, wrote of how his dad tried to live out a principled and restrained style of leadership. Preach the sermon daily and, if necessary, use words. <laughs> it summarizes the man. In 1990, President Bush and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev forged an agreement on the U.S.-Soviet Chemical Weapons Accord and the signing of the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty known as START, setting in motion an unprecedented reduction of nuclear arsenals for both nations. But Bush 41 was still fighting a domestic perception gained on the campaign trail, that of a wealthy, privileged bureaucrat who was soft. Panama would be his first test. In December 1989, he ordered more than 27,000 U.S. troops to invade Panama to depose General Manuel Noriega, who was said to be threatening the security of Americans living there. Hundreds of Panamanians died. But his greatest military test came when Iraqi President Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait in 1990. Bush rallied 34 nations to send hundreds of thousands of troops to Iraq, forming Operation Desert Storm. They launched an air war, followed by a brief ground assault, ending in a decisive victory for the coalition. A year later, Bush ran for re-election, but a faltering economy and a broken promise on preventing tax hikes led to his loss to Democrat Bill Clinton in 1992. It was that loss that emboldened two of his sons to run for public office. Bush 41's presidency spawned an American political dynasty that continues to this day. Jessica Stone, CGTN, Washington.